How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben Hassin here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you. And today I'm going on a hike. It is a Saturday. My friends, Nomi and Zena, they're a couple, I love them. Uh, they invited me over to go 45 minutes outside the city to Snellville, Georgia, which I almost never go to, uh, to hike uh, this river trail that's about three miles. So it's a pretty chill hike, but I'm gonna get my cardio in for the day. Jean-Luc says good morning. Jean-Luc, baby. Good morning. I woke up at like 6.30 today on a Saturday with only like six hours of sleep. Actually, the last couple of, um, I think for like the past week, I've been waking up with only six hours of sleep and I'm, I'm not like super, super tired when I wake up, but I can definitely tell that I don't have the energy levels that I do when I get like seven hours of sleep. But for some reason, my body is just waking myself up. Like I set the alarm at eight hours, but I'm waking up at six. I don't know what that is. Could be some psychological thing going on because your boy, y'all know your boy has been going through it for a while. But, you know, I was actually thinking yesterday that I am starting to feel better. So, <clears throat> not the cough though, um, but I just feel really positive and I've been... Instead of, you know, being in sorrow, Ben, I think I'm going back to my, um, Ben is gonna kick butt uh, phase. So I'm happy about that and feeling confident in myself and, and seeing myself as an attractive man, which uh, usually sometimes I have a hard time with, but I know, I know I'm attractive and people, people think I'm attractive. <laughs> um, sometimes I just overanalyze my qualities, but Usually after a, a depressing episode that I have in my life, I tend to doubt myself a lot, but you know, I'm a cutie. Look at this hair. This hair is so cute. This hat is so cute. My beard is so cute. So yeah, we're gonna go into this hike with a positive attitude. So this was my first time ever doing this trail. It's called the Yellow River Trail. Um, don't know how it got that name. Not gonna ask any questions because Georgia tends to name things on some very problematic ways sometimes, but uh, th th those are no that's Nomi and Zena. They're my friends. They wanted to be in the vlog, <laughs> and that's their two dogs, Ziggy and Tuna. They're so adorable. I love hanging out with these two dogs. They have so much stamina. I mean, they can keep up with us, which is wild to me because I've been with other smaller dogs. But this trail is full of open lands, lots of water, and lots of forest. It is absolutely freaking beautiful i did not know this existed so close to downtown atlanta and like there's little cute little enclaves here and there and we just had an amazing time i think the total time we spent in this hike was about two hours and wow it was so so nice and i have no words for how beautiful this was and we also saw a snake y'all it was a pretty huge snake too we were kind of scared i tried to get a video of it but you know i didn't i, didn't, I also didn't want to die for the vlog so i didn't get too close but i got pretty close enough to get how big the snake was oh man y'all i just had so so much fun this morning going on that hike it was almost a three hour hike but I just had so much fun throughout. I think one of my long languages is actually like physical activity, like doing physical activities together. Cause I'm just like a, I just like moving. So I had so, so much fun. And then we went to the Goodwill, the dollar store. It was just a great all around morning. And now I've just taken a shower cause I got really stinky and kind of sweaty. Um, took a shower, got dressed. This is the fit, but I'm going to go see uh, get pho first for dinner and then go see Polite Society, which is this kung fu action flick, but it's also South Asian Desi inspired. So not, I don't really know what to expect. I didn't even look up the reviews. I'm just going to go and see the movie kind of, uh, without any expectations, but I'm looking forward to it. But today's fit is very retro. I'm wearing, uh, khaki pants along with this retro polo that, uh, I got a while ago, about a year ago, from Amazon, and uh, I think it looked pretty cute. And I'm not trying to impress anybody, but I want to feel confident uh, while I go see this movie. Oh my god, y'all. Last night, Polite Society was so, so good. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was not expecting such a good movie, and there was so much Muslim representation. 
uh, two, which I I didn't, I didn't I went into that movie blind, so not knew nothing about the plot, knew nothing about like the characters or like their backgrounds. But it was really cool to see like British Western Muslims in a movie, and they're doing like not stereotypical Muslim things. So I highly recommend you watch the movie. It's super funny. Me and my friends, we had a great time. We went to Fa Dai Loi too, which it was one of our favorite fa places in Atlanta. But for some from for some reason it wasn't hitting last night. Uh, I don't know why. I think I, I'm just gonna give it as give it to them as a bad day. But it is the following morning. I am dressed up to go see my friend Cindy, uh, who is a medical student over in Louisiana in the New Orleans area. But uh, she matched in physiatry in Chicago. Her and her fiance came to Atlanta because this weekend Taylor Swift was in town, Miss Swifty. So, and Janet Jackson, apparently. Yeah, so I avoided the city like uh, like the plague, but um, their flight is later on at 1 p.m. So I'm getting really cute to go meet her and her boo, which I haven't met before, uh, before they leave for their flight at 1 p.m. So this should be fun. I just got back and y'all, and it was so fun. I'm so glad to have such a great like internet community and I get to meet them in real life whenever they're in town or we're in the same location. And it's just so nice to like build such a network of queer identifying folks. And yeah, it was it was pretty great. It was such a nice it's it's been such a nice experience for me to put myself out there and meet like like-minded folks and get to know their family and uh, you know their fiance and their partner so i met my friend cindy who i knew on twitter and she actually came to atlanta about a year ago and we ended up getting like desserts and then she came she came this weekend uh like i said to see taylor swift and then i got to meet her fiance and he's adorable i love him and yeah it's just like so so wholesome we got coffee took some beautiful pictures together and uh, it's it's a great start to a Sunday morning. And actually, the weather is starting to get better. It was raining on my way to the coffee shop. So I'll be spending the rest of the day with my uh, bio fam and then chillaxing at home and not doing anything else. Because thank God, yo, this weekend was packed. Also, for some reason, I thought I was going to like girl boss really hard and go work out after coming home today. But that's not going to happen because I did like a three to four mile hike yesterday and I am very sore. I think my age is starting to catch, finally catch up to me because I woke up this morning and like it was so hard. I was like ah, 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 creaking when I was getting out of bed. So I think uh, ever since 25, I just feel like my body is, uh, it, it takes a while to bounce back. Another thing I wanted to do today in this vlog is to replace my engine air filter because my manufacturer recommended uh, maintenance requirements so that I should change out the engine air filter and the cabin air filter and uh, believe it or not guys I try to spend as little money as possible on car repairs if I can do it myself and a lot of these car repair things that we spend 30 40 bucks for can easily be done by yourself in like uh, for like 15 bucks so like this engine air filter only cost me 10 bucks and if I installed it myself I would say it'd be like 20 bucks and over time stuff like that really uh, adds up and saves you a lot of money so you can spend that money on other things or other frivolous things like I do um, So I just watched this video on how to install it. It's actually a really simple process I don't know why I was struggling <laughs> so hard to install this engine air filter because it is honestly really easy And now that I look back on it, I was like I was thinking I was doing something wrong But I wasn't I was just assuming that I did it wrong, but my overanalyzing self was struggling a lot and wanting to make sure that I was doing everything correctly. But yeah, uh, although it looks like <laughs> your boy is struggling. Wow, I really look pathetic right now. But um, I was doing everything right. I don't know why I was trying to make it extremely, extremely flush because stuff like this doesn't need to be completely, completely flush like that because um, cars aren't surprisingly designed that well but you'll see that <laughs> i went back and i read the instructions to make sure that i was installing it correctly <laughs> look at me looking at the camera because i'm like wow these people are going to judge me so hard for not knowing how to do it but no i i did install it correctly and i did go to the mechanic 
a couple of weeks after to get a, a vehicle inspection and they said that the engine air filter looks excellent and was installed properly so i was just worrying for no reason but uh your boy uh doesn't want to ruin his brand new car because uh i'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to pay this back over the next five years and I can't have it uh, die on me. But yeah, this was a super, super easy uh, task even though it looks kind of hard right now <laughs> in this video. But um, yeah, 10 bucks and I saved myself a couple dollars. Yeah, so something that I really like about Subaru is it's so easy to maintain. Like I said, I just changed out the engine air filter, easy AF, five minute job and a benefit is that the oil filter is on top so you don't even need to go under the car if you want to do your own oil changes you change the filter up top and you can get something called an oil manual oil extractor so instead of draining the oil from down below you just put a little tube down this oil line and then pull out the oil from the pan from up here and that's usually like a hundred dollar investment but if you're doing your oil changes yourself after you get the oil extractor you'll be spending like $30 per oil change so in about three oil changes you you essentially just pay off the oil ex the, the pay off the amount you would pay for the oil extractor good morning all it's Monday morning last night I had such a great time with the fam may or may not have gone, gone to Marshall's and bought two more Kenneth Cole shirts but we're not gonna talk about that but when I was at my parents, I picked up some packages that I purchased and sent over to their place um, for moving. So I got all these all these boxes, they're medium sized boxes that I can use to pack. And then um, I know like I could always go to like Facebook Marketplace or next door and get like moving boxes that like people have just have lying around because they just moved down here. But I realized a lot of the times when you do get those moving boxes they're not in the best condition and they're those are perfectly fine for local moving but i'm doing a cross-country move not cross-country but like regional move, <laughs> regional move to two uh two states over which means i need some pretty sturdy boxes uh that can hold its shape especially if it's going to be in my car where i'm going to be driving around 70 miles per hour on average so i don't want anything you know just escaping from out of the car and hitting my windshield so that's why i did i opted in to buying some pretty sturdy uh, fresh boxes in addition to that i also have this this giant box is where the boxes came from it was such a pain to take this up the stairs but um i also got some bubble wrap and some other like little packing supplies that I'm gonna use to pack. I don't know my, right now my strategy is the first day on my move-in day, I'm gonna pack everything into my car, drive up to Durham, unload, leave John Luke, and then stay there for a week. And then the following week, I actually do have an appointment down here in Atlanta, so I have to come back. So I'll do a second load in my car. I don't know if that will be enough to uh, pack everything that I own. So I was wondering maybe this weekend I could probably like rent a public storage space up in Durham and do a third round but I'm, I'm just not sure I think maybe what I'll do is if I still have stuff left over here I'll probably just drop it off with my parents they have a full garage and like shed so maybe I can keep some of my stuff there and then come back and get the rest of the stuff at some time in the near future I'll, I also ordered this rooftop cargo bag so that should be coming in in a couple of days and that should give me some extra space to load onto my Subaru so I can make this move as cheap as possible. So I want to take some time in this vlog to talk a little bit about some of the sacrifices you make to be to choose to be in the field of medicine, whether it, it doesn't just mean a physician, like nurses have similar workloads, and so does other healthcare professionals like PAs and MPs. And kind of like the sacrifices you make to enter this field, I know a lot of people are always, see this as like a super, super prestigious field. They see it as a field where like you always have job security. And yes, those are always, really awesome benefits like i never like my sister took almost a year to find a job 
and she had a whole bachelor's degree and a work experience while she was in school. My brother, who is a, who's recently got a computer science degree, it took him almost six months to find a job. And I definitely understand my privilege of, you know, making a really solid income and never having to really worry about a job as long as I don't have any like weird things on my record. So there are benefits to being a physician and in, in the healthcare workforce, but you really do make a lot of sacrifices that a lot of people just don't know about. I know a lot of set people say, well, I already know a lot of them. And that one is that you, you're, you take forever to get your degrees, but that's honestly a non-issue for me. I never see getting my medical degree or getting more training as something that's pushing my life back. I see it as part of my life. So as I get older, the aspect of getting training, it's not something that I see as a waste of time. It is something that's incorporated into how I grow as a person, how I build my family. But some of the sacrifices I've realized over the years is that one, it's incredibly hard to create lasting romantic relationships. Two, um, Another misconception is that it's hard to be with friends. Actually, my friend life has been amazing. Um, I make time, whenever I have time, I make time to see my friends. I never make excuses to not see my friends. But I realized that being in such a high stress, you really have to dedicate a huge portion of your life to this career is that it makes romantic relationships very hard because you carry, like as, as much as I like to separate my work from my personal life if i have a patient pass away if i have a patient that's like is going through a lot i'm going to carry that with me home and i try my best not to do that but it does create days where i'm not feeling my best and i realize <coughs> over time this commitment to serve really does affect romantic relationships because if you date someone outside of medicine they just don't understand why it's so hard they don't understand why you have to be so caring because usually people in this generation just choose themselves and and there's nothing wrong with that but as someone who's cho chosen this field i have a commitment to give someone the utmost respect and also because I'm so busy, a lot of people just don't understand that I cannot be there in every single situation. Yes, I'll try to be there as much as possible and it tears me up inside when I can't be there. So I feel like sometimes that I really, really do want to have, I don't want to have any judgments on who I, you know, choose to have a romantic relationship with, but the more and more I see myself dating or being in the ro romance world it's just that unless i'm talking to another healthcare provider or like a lawyer or someone with a pilot or a flight attendant people just don't understand why there is that commitment to your profession and it's not because we love our jobs most of us yes we do love our jobs but it doesn't make up our entire life it just takes up so much of our time. Another thing I've noticed in working in a profession that's predominantly has been, has roots in faith-based, but also mostly white men used to be in this profession is that it is so, so archaic. I mean, you would think medicine is very, very open-minded. We t take care of everyone, but because of the roots of Western medicine specifically, there is, so much bias and you carry that as a person of color like not only am i a person of color i'm an immigrant i am first generation i'm queer i'm trans and all of those multi-identities that i have it weighs down on you seeing how badly people with my identities are treated how immigrants are treated how people who don't speak english are treated how women and gender minorities are treated, that stuff is rough to see, especially when I see it on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not like I see it every once in a while. I see patients who represent minorities be treated like garbage 
every single day. And that tears up my soul. Like I can't, I can't express how much it hurts to see that. And like, we, we want to talk about it, we address it in medicine, but there's nothing that happens. There's no structural change that I've seen that's made significant impact. And yes, I do, I honor, I honor the people who are doing the work. Oh my God, they probably changed so much that I, I don't even see on my everyday basis, but there is so much work to do and it's so hard to deal with. And I, I see, I see my chosen family, I see my community in Norcross that I grew up with, I see my community in Atlanta that I grew up in, in, in the faces of every single patient I have. And those are things that I carry every day with me. And people just don't realize that choosing a field like this, those are those untalked about things you carry and you will carry for the rest of your life. So one of the items I got to help me with the move out process <coughs> are one of these vacuum storage bags. They're not like the brand name that we usually see the as seen on TV, but it comes with a little mini vac that's supposed to help you seal these bags really well. So I want to test it out. It's, it's going to be about three, three weeks until my official move out day, but I'm going to start packing and putting stuff away. Like I've said, I don't want to wait till the last week because then I'm going to just get super, super overwhelmed. So let's test this out with my, one of my bedding sets because I'm not going to be using it uh, until I move to Durham. So I just want to see how well this little tiny vacuum works because this was only 30 bucks. And if it's good, like I, I, I want to recommend it to y'all. Okay. Looks like a pretty simple opening. Just gotta get rid of the tape. Oh, these are little clips, I think, just to keep things secure. And these, I think, are the bags. All right. All right, these are the bags. Huh, okay. So they have different sizes from large to small. I think this is the largest size that they have. So I'm gonna try and vacuum seal this one, this sheet that I have, and let's see how much uh, how much it like reduces its size. Let's open this up. Yeah, that was pretty simple. <laughs> let's see. Electric air pump, 55 watts. It's pretty simple. It just has a little, little on button and just a standard cord. So it, I think it's not, not that complicated. So let's put my thing in. I think I might have to put it in this way. Oh, is it gonna fit? I wonder. <laughs> this might not fit. Okay, I just stuffed this with as much like stuff I can possibly cram in. So it's my big sheets, um, not sheets, but it's my big quilt that I use for the, the winter time as my blanket, along with some uh, pillowcases and ceremonial um, sherwanis and kurtas that I usually wear during holiday season, which has passed already, Ramadan's passed. Which, I think it's really funny that there's like moon symbols, because I'm just talking about Ramadan. <laughs> Lol. Right. So I guess I just... Oh, there's an open and closed position. Okay, cool. So I guess I put it on the open position and turn it on, right? Oh! Oh my god. <laughs> and close. Is it closed? Oh. Yeah, I think it is closed. Wow. <laughs>
It is like a pack of jerky, y'all. I'm so happy that worked, y'all, because then all I'll need to do is probably my entire closet full of clothes, like here. In addition to my coat closet, it's only, I'm, I'm just gonna have to like stuff them in a bag and it won't even take up that much space in my car. So the real dealio stuff that's gonna take up space, I can, um, I can like load into my car and it'll be great. Hey y'all, for some reason, I don't know why, but I have terrible luck at these self-service stations. Today, I went on a weekday at like 2 p.m. where everybody's supposed to be at work and these self-service stations were still full of cars. I'm just like, I don't get it. The automated stations, there's like no cars there. Um, so I think I'm just gonna have to wait for my plates to, um, to wash my car, but I just finished lunch. But while I was waiting for lunch to heat up, I actually started my first couple of things that I've been needing to pack. So I have so far packed two boxes. This one, this box is all the stuff in my six drawer shelf organizer. And this is all the spices that all is in one of my cabinets, my sp a specific dedicated spice cabinet. So I'm starting to pack the things that I don't use often and will not be using that much. Uh, during the next three weeks here in Atlanta, just so the last week I'm not I'm not like dying um, Trying to pack everything and making sure everything is done. I also have two trash bags full of stuff tomorrow My goal is to start donating stuff um, Just fill my car with as much stuff as I can that I'm not gonna take with me and start donating those things to lost and found the uh, queer homeless youth uh, Organization here that has their own dedicated thrift store down the street from me and the Kallax shelf is completely empty I just have a couple of things on top, but I'm gonna get rid of that But this is going to be given to a friend of mine who bought the who bought the shelves. So uh, We're getting a lot done and I'm really happy about it um, Today is one of those days where I am a bit somber, but we are getting things done and I'm I couldn't ask for anything else. So super quickie update. I would just talk to my friend who wants to pick up the shelf and buy it from me. Um, she's only available Wednesday evening for me to drop off the shelf. So I have to figure out some way to get it down by myself. It's not too heavy. And I really don't want to wait on a friend to come down tomorrow and help me out with it. I feel like I could do it by myself. So I am going to attempt it right now. Wish me luck. <laughs> y'all somehow by the will of Allah I managed to get this down three flights of stairs oh my god y'all so it's the next day since I um since I loaded my car and surprisingly I'm not too sore um I went to the gym after loading my car and my friend was like but the friend that I'm delivering it to was like are you sure you're not gonna be sore af tomorrow and I'm not too sore like Obviously, like it hurts, but it just feels like I went to the gym and I really did go to the gym after loading the car. Um, I still needed my lifts in, but I am doing really well. I'm, I don't even have to be on any like painkillers or anything. So um, I will probably never do that again. I did that because of a time crunch, but I am not uh, risking uh, hurting myself. Uh, thank God I had a weight belt so I was able to do that safely and protect my back while I was doing it and today uh, there was another announcement I found out that the two friends I went on a hike with earlier in this vlog they got engaged the night of the day I saw them so oh my god at the Tw Taylor Swift concert so I woke up super super happy this morning uh it's just so nice to see like two very loving people who sacrifice for each other who are there for each other just like commit to living a life together i mean it's beautiful and you know i i, I haven't had the best luck in that department but it, it just gives me hope because they're a couple years older than me it just gives me hope for the future um so today I am going to be recording a podcast with one of the organizations I've done a previous speaking engagement with in about two-ish hours. 
and then the rest of the week is going to be busy busy still so i'm going to be donating all this stuff and more things so the goal is to try to load my car as much as possible throughout the next couple of days and just start donating stuff left and right and just start packing i know i'm a little bit early at three weeks but i just want to make sure i have everything so um in the next couple of vlogs that you might see me in this apartment um, my apartment's gonna look a little messy but i think uh i think that's just the expected thing anyways y'all that is for this week's vlog i hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed coming on this germany with me john luke can definitely tell that something's going on um he was just like hanging around where the organizer was um earlier yesterday and he's 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 moved with me a couple of times but hopefully i won't be moving uh for the next couple of years once i start residency so he'll have somewhere stagnant and maybe he'll get a sibling we'll see anyways y'all i'll see y'all in the next vlog Mwah. this is dr ben